Me. Now, Father, we thank you for the word. Thank you for ears to hear. Thank you for minds to understand. Thank you, Father, for hearts to receive. Father, I thank you for your anointing that removes every burden, destroys every yoke. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who is the teacher and because of him, revelation flows in this place unhindered and unchecked by any force. Father, I thank you for clarity of thought. Thank you for accuracy of speech. Thank you for boldness to say what needs to be said. Most of all, I thank you for a heart of compassion to speak the truth in love. So, Father, we declare today as we hear the word, our faith will be increased, our minds will be renewed, our understanding enlightened, and ultimately, because we do the word of God, our lives will be changed for the better. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Well, go ahead and take your seat and let's get started for today's lesson. Turn with me in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse number 7, as well as Galatians 3, 1, Galatians 5, 7, Galatians 3, 1. While you're going there, repeat after me, I am a child of God, and I am established in righteousness. God's word is life to me, and health to my flesh. The anointing that is on the word abides in me and teaches me what I need to know. I am about to get wisdom and in all my getting, I get understanding of God's word, God's will and plan for my life. My life is being restored with the Word of God, the Word of God is restoring my life. Verse 7 says, Ye did run well, who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Galatians 3 and 1 says, O foolish Galatian, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Galatians 5 and 7 is a passage that deals with things that distract. Galatians 3 and 1 is one that deals with things that bewitch us, or that fool us, who has bewitched you, which means to be deceived, that you should not obey the truth. Today is lesson 15, and we've been talking about a lifestyle change. We've been using for a subtopic, who or what has detoured you. The objective of this particular series has been to increase our faith, that we may conform to the image of Jesus and adhere to uh, a lifestyle that is consistent with the truth of God's Word. Today we'll bring closure to this part of the teaching and, and what I don't cover today I will cover on Wednesday uh, because I, I need to be in another place on, on Sunday when the new, new year starts. So we've been exploring what I call the eight places of faith. The eight places of faith are eight places where our faith should be. It comes from the fundamental fact and the spiritual truth that faith will only work for you and I when it is in the right place. And so right now we're dealing with the seventh place of faith, and that is the name of Jesus, that faith is to be placed in the name of Jesus. Now we've discovered that we have been given power through the Holy Spirit and we have been given authority through the name of Jesus. As we begin to talk about the name of Jesus and its power, its authority, we also begin to look at demons and devils and demonic activity. And so we discovered that there are three levels of demonic operation. Number one, there is possession. The devil's intent there is to destroy an individual. Second level of operation we said is oppression, and his intent there is to depress an individual. And today we're going to look more, we're not going to spend a lot of time, but we're going to look at this third level of demonic operation, and that is suggestion 
temptation, and influence. Say suggestion, suggestion. temptation, temptation. Influence. influence. One more time, suggestion, suggestion. temptation, temptation. Influence. influence. Now, let, let's pick up here because this is when the devil, uh, by way of evil spirits, he attempts to seduce, he attempts to influence or provoke an individual to go against God's will, God's word, and God's way. He wants to influence you. He wants to entice you so that you go against God, whether it's God's word, God's will, or God's way. But the enemy, he wants to do that. Now, his intent through this level of demonic operation is to distract you. The devil wants to distract you. But now you've been given the authority so that he is not successful in his attempts. Amen. Now turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter number 16. Now we know when we look at the Word of God, we see on many different occasions where the devil tried to influence people in the Word of God. The devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness, the Bible said. We find that account in, in Matthew 4. We find it also in Luke chapter number 4. But he, he tempted Jesus. He tried to influence him to go against God, to go against his will, go against his word, go against his way. And that's what the devil wants to do with you. We also see in Scripture where the devil, he influenced Ananias. Ananias and Sapphira, he influenced them to lie concerning uh, their contribution to the things of God. We also know, according to Chronicles, the Bible said that the devil, it says Satan, verse 1, it says that Satan, he provoked David to do something that displeased God. The Bible also lets us know that Eve was influenced by the devil. Not only that, but Judas, the Bible says that Judas, that Satan entered into him and caused him to betray Jesus. And then also, the devil, he used Job's wife to try to get him to sarcastically blame God for all the trouble that he was going through. He tried to influence Job, she tried to influence Job, rather, to curse God. Remember that? She said, curse God and die. And that's an interesting word there, that word curse, because when we think about the word curse, we think about, you know, speaking negative about someone, speaking down on someone, not having something positive to say about us, cursing someone. But this word curse here in the Hebrew, it carries the meaning and the idea of being sarcastic where you have God to thank for where you are. You know, when you follow the wisdom of somebody and, and it doesn't work out. Somebody tell you, this is what you need to do. You go and do exactly what they said and the bottom fall out. And then somebody say, well, you got them to thank for that. And that's what Job's wife is saying to him in the book of Job. You have God to thank for all the trouble that you're going through. You know, you're the one who's committed to him. You're maintaining your integrity with God. And look at all the stuff you're going through where you all thank God for what he's doing in your life. That's what she's saying. But, but, but however, here's what I want you to get, get you to see, is that the devil, he will try to influence you. He will tempt you. The strongest weapon of the enemy is suggestion. He can't make you do anything. All he could do is give the suggestion and watch you do it. Amen. He doesn't make you do it. He gives the suggestion. He gives the idea. He brings the influence, and then he sets back and watch you do it. But he's not the doer of any of it. Amen? So let's look at verse number, verse number 21, verse 21 of Matthew 16. It says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Verse 22 says, Then Peter took him. You know who Peter is, right? This is one of the disciples, right? Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be done, un shall, shall not be unto thee. But he turned, watch this, and said unto who? Peter. 
He turned and said unto who? Peter. Come on, class. Some of y'all, y'all what y'all doing? All right, come on. He turned and said unto who? Peter. Peter. He turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me. Come on. Say it. Who is he talking to? Peter. But he realizes who is influencing Peter. He turns and he says to who? Peter. What does he say? Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. And you got to know, you have to know when the enemy is working through somebody in an attempt to distract you from God's will, God's word, or God's way. Because what the enemy wants to do, he wants to distract you and put you on another track that would lead you away from the destiny that God already has for you. Amen. Now look what he goes on to say. He says, uh, he says to him, get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense. This word offense means stumbling block. Watch this, hindrance. You are a hindrance to me. Because the devil will use people to try to hinder you. He will use people to try to prevent you from doing what God wants you to do. And he goes on to say, for thou savor it not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. What is he saying? You're more concerned about the things of men than you are the things of God. Now, how many know that the devil is not concerned about the things of God at all? And so because he's not concerned about the things of God, don't you think it's just in his bloodline, as it were, to try to get you distracted away from the things of God? Because he's sure not concerned about the things of God. And guess what? He doesn't want you concerned about the things of God. He wants you concerned about the things of men. He wants you concerned about the things of your flesh. He wants you concerned about the things of the world and not the things of God. So it's nothing for him to try to distract you. And what he wants to distract you from is God's will, God's word, and God's way. That's what he wants to distract you from. All right? Now, so, so we see here where the devil is working through, through Peter, right? So you know when he turned to Peter that he didn't turn around, and when he looked at Peter, he saw some horns sticking out of Peter's head, and Peter was standing out with a red jumpsuit on with a long tail. We know that's not what happened, right? So he looked right at Peter. He looked right at Peter who looked just like he looked when Jesus called him. But he had enough spiritual discernment to know that's the devil talking. Amen. And how many of us, we waste our time with flesh and blood. Attacking flesh, attacking blood, attacking our wives, attacking our husbands, attacking, you know, kids, attacking the parents because we don't have enough spiritual discernment to recognize that ain't nothing but the devil working. Amen. So we end up cursing out our boss, our supervisor, and bucking and fighting and doing all of that, not even realizing that it ain't nothing but the devil working. All right. All right. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further. Turn me in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I want to show you the Apostle Paul, he lets us see the same thing, that the devil will work through people. The devil will work through people. Amen. You know, people walk into your life, take advantage of you, and then walk away. You think that was God? No, that wasn't God. That's the devil. And you got to watch out for the enemy. Amen. All right, now watch this in verse number 18. Verse 18 says, Wherefore, we would have come unto you. This is the Apostle Paul talking, and he's talking to the church at Thessalonica. He said, We would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. But what? Satan did what? Hindered us. The devil stopped us. Satan hindered us. Paul said, I wanted to come unto you. Once and again, I wanted to come. But I, I got detained. I was hindered. The devil, he said it, he clearly said, Satan hindered us. Now, now folks, now, now watch this now. Now, what does he mean, Satan hindered it? Did some kind of spirit jump out and attack him and, and arrest him and, and detain him and hold him down? Now, Paul makes it clear. This 18 is nothing more than the text. When you look at the context surrounding this, starting at verse number 15, he lets us know exactly who he's talking about. He's talking about those Jews, and he made the statement in the same context. He said, I'm talking about them same ones that crucified Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wasn't nothing but the devil working through them. 
And so here we see even Paul, he says, Satan hindered us. He said, those Jews that persecuted us, those are the ones I'm talking about. But he has enough spiritual discernment to recognize that the enemy was working through them. Satan can work through people. And people, don't, don't, let, don't let Hollywood tell you what the devil look like. Amen. Don't, 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 don't get fooled. Don't get betrayed by what you see on television Friday the 13th, all this old kind of stuff that we look at, you know, stuff that people have seen all that. that, that, that that's not what the devil looked like. Matter of fact, turn, turn to the person next to you. Just look around. You. Turn to the person next to you. Just look at them. Get a good look at them. Come on, look at them on the other side. Look at them. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Look at them. Now, now, now watch this. That's what the devil looked like. <laughs> that's exactly what he looked like. Somebody say, I knew that was the devil right there, boy. I'm telling you. That, that, that is exactly what the devil looked like. If, you, if you're looking for some monster or some creature, the devil going to defeat you every time. He's going to defeat you every time. But he can influence, he can tempt, he can provoke others and work through them to try to prevent you from doing God's will, God's word, going God's way. That's what he wants to do. All right, let's, let's move a little further. Go to, go to Acts chapter 5 and verse number 3. I, I'm just trying to get you to see right now that the devil does work through people. Just like God works through people so he can bless others, the devil works through people so he can distract others. Just like God can work through somebody to get you in his way, to get you in line with his will, the devil will work through somebody trying to get you away from God's will. And, 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 you, and you have to spend your time addressing the devil and not so much flesh and blood because our, our fight is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities, rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what our fight is against. But we spend more time fighting the flesh. And as long as we spend time fighting the flesh, the devil, he can continue to take advantage of us. That's good, Pastor. That's good. Are you listening to me? Gotta know when the devil when the devil is working, working against you. Now, look at Acts chapter 5 and verse number 3. Look what verse 3 clearly said. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Hmm. Now, now who influenced him to lie to the Holy Ghost? Satan. Satan filled his heart, got him to lie to the Holy Ghost. That's what happened when, you know, when a child stand there and lied to his parents. Ain't nothing but the devil, man. Yeah. Nothing more than the devil. You know, you know, God didn't influence you and give you that lie to tell your parents. Yeah. That's the influence. See, that's, now, don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I didn't say your child was possessed. There's a difference between possession, oppression, and influence. So don't, don't get offended. He ain't calling call my child possessed with the devil. I didn't even say that. So chill out. <laughs> Amen. But I'm saying that is, that is influence. That is the influence of the devil. It is the influence of the devil when your children's supposed to be somewhere and they didn't start listening to somebody else who got them somewhere they're not supposed to be. That is the influence of the devil. And that's all I'm trying to get you to see, that the devil, he, he can influence me, he can influence you. None of us are exempt from the temptations of the devil. But now we have power. We have authority over him. And just because he influenced me, I don't have to go the way he's trying to get me to go. Amen. Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And let me show you something here. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 11. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Because the enemy, now the only way he can defeat you is to get the advantage of you. If he can get the advantage of you, he can whoop you every time. He can defeat you every time. He can distract you every time. Look what he says in verse number 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not, come on. Ignorant. Now, this word ignorant is not a bad word. To be ignorant just simply means to be unlearned. All right? 
He said, for we are not ignorant or unlearned regarding his devices. So the devil, he uses devices. He uses schemes. He has tricks. He has plans. He has a method. He has an M.O. He has a way that he does what he does. And the Bible says that Satan should not get the advantage of us. We're not ignorant of his devices. So which means the only way the devil can take advantage of me or get the advantage over me is I be unlearned or I be ignorant of his devices. See, I'm steady cussing out my boss thinking it's him. And the devil going to keep taking advantage of me. I'm at the job bucking and, and cursing my supervisor and mad at everybody on the job. And, and the devil, he's he just sitting there because he know I don't realize it's him yet. It's almost like throwing rocks and hiding your hand. And you over there wondering, you know, why you keep hitting me? And, and the person who hitting you just kind of sitting there. It's the influence of the devil. And we cannot be ignorant of his devices. As long as you are attacking your husband, as long as you are attacking your wife, as long as you guys are going back and forth with each other, the devil, he, he going to keep doing what he's doing and then walk out of the room and let y'all box it out. And, 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 you don't, and you hadn't caught on yet and, and, and got a revelation of having that spiritual discernment to recognize, you know what, this ain't nothing but the devil. This ain't nothing but the devil. He get us started, then he go on out, and then, then we just kind of simmer down, and now we get along fine. Then he come back in again and get you all stirred up all over again. Folks, we are not ignorant of his devices. And I am teaching you this to remove your ignorance where the devil is concerned. There is a real devil. That's a real devil. And he is a, the devil is a disembodied spirit. And he has to have a body in order to function in the earth realm because spirits are illegal in the earth without a physical body. And so just like God got to have somebody to work through, the devil got to have somebody to work through as well. And so he's looking for a body. He'll try to hook up with anybody. It don't make him no never mind. Doesn't make him any different. If he can hook up with you, if he can ride with you, he'll pull right up to you. Let me ride with you this morning. And all of a sudden you don't know why you mad. Well, you got the devil riding with you. You go to work mad and don't even realize what's going on. But you got, you got the devil riding with you. Right. Yeah. That's good, Pastor. Yes, sir. They had a song. This, this, I used to hear this old lady sing this song all the time. This song called Don't Let the Devil Ride. Because if you let him ride, come on, he going to want to drive. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, 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 did you bring him with you this morning? Did you bring him with you this morning? Amen? Because he's, look, he, he, he's a disembodied spirit, and he, he has to have somebody that, that he can influence. That's what he wants to do is influence you. He wants to tempt you. He wants to persuade you and I to go against God to where we get distracted from the word of God. We get distracted from the will of God. We get distracted from the way of God. That's what he wants to do. And, and, and sad to say that, that too many believers have gotten distracted by the devil. It's good, Pastor. Doing good in marriage, get distracted by the devil. Doing good in business, get distracted by the devil. Doing good in ministry, get distracted by the devil. Amen? Amen. Say, but no more. No more. Say, I refuse, I refuse to be distracted, be distracted. by the devil. And so you got to realize now, just like God will bring people into your life to be a blessing to you, then the devil is going to send some people into your life also. Amen. People are in your life for events. Some people come into your life, they're just there for an episode. They're just there for an event. Other people are in your life, you know, for different reasons. Some people are in your life just for what I call an error, just an error of time. They just there for a season. You got to know when their season is up. Sometimes you can let people overstay their welcome in your life. Amen. Amen. And people are in your, in your life. Some people are in your life. God ain't ever planned on having them in your life. You let them folk in your life. And them folk have caused more havoc in your life, man, than you can even put your mind on. Are you listening to me? All right. Now, listen. Now, through the use of the name of Jesus, 
when you use, now people, you got to understand that you have been empowered here. You are empowered by the Holy Ghost and you have been given delegated authority, a token or a badge of influence by God through the name of Jesus. And when you and I use the name of Jesus, we are demonstrating delegated authority and invoking power as sons of God. I'm going to say that again, that when you use the name of Jesus, and that's why you just can't use the name casually. You, you have to use that name in confidence. You use that name in faith. You use that name with an assurance, knowing that when I use the name of Jesus, I am demonstrating my delegated authority, and I am invoking the power that God has given me. And when I use that name, things are going to change whenever I use that name. Now, you got to have that kind of confidence where that name is concerned. That you're not just throwing that name around, well, in the name of Jesus. No, no, no. No, when I use that name, things are about to turn. Even the devil, because the Bible said that demons, they tremble at the name of Jesus. And when they get a believer who really know what that name means. Amen. There's power in that name. I grew up in a community, and, and you know, sometimes we'd be at this, I, I grew up in Acres Hole, and you know, there's a park called Lincoln City Park. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or down there in the projects, yeah. where everything used to go down at. Yes, sir. Down there on, 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 on Lillio, 790. Yeah, Lillio, down there, Lillio and Shepherd, down, that was the project. Every now and then, you know, we'd be on the basketball court or something, every now and then you hear old boy say, don't make me go to my trunk. Now, 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 what is he letting you know? That I got power in my trunk. Yeah. And if I go to my trunk and come back, something's going to change. Yeah, yeah you saying that now, but let me get to my trunk. Yeah. See, 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 now watch this. Now look where his confidence is. Yeah. And now his confidence is in the power he got in that trunk. Yeah. And he know once he go to this trunk, all them folk who've been talking, they're going to shut their mouth when he come back from his trunk. Now, now watch this, folk. Now we talking about something made by man. Yeah. What about the power of God? What about that power that no man can resist, no devil can resist, no demon can resist? But I'm talking about power that's above every power and a name that is above every name that can ever be named. Don't make me call on the name of Jesus here. Don't make me call on the name of Jesus. And you got to have confidence yes. in that name yes. just like he had confidence in what's in that trunk. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Say Jesus. Jesus. Shout it again, Jesus. Jesus. You got to get confidence in that name. Yes, sir. And I'm telling you, the Bible said demons tremble at that name. Yeah. And when you see, and I'm using this analogy so you can see, when we saw that boy go to his trunk, man, folks, man, I'm getting out of here, man, I'm gone. I'm, I'm, I'm getting out the way. Folks start scattering, man. And that's how the devil is. The Bible clearly said he trembles at the name of Jesus. And when you start using that name, demons, got, they get out the way. Man, I'm getting out of here. He didn't win, got the name. He didn't win, got the name of Jesus. I'm getting out of here because I know ain't nothing I can do with that name. And the devil, listen to me, the devil has more confidence in the ability of that name than some Christians do. You sitting there with all the power. You sitting there with all the authority. You sitting there with your hand on the detonator. And you talking about, I don't know what I'm going to do. Use the name of Jesus, man. That's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use that name. Yes. Yes, sir. There's power in that name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, see, them old, you know, man, you know, many of our, our forefathers, them old folk, they knew that. I hate to, I don't know what to call it. Old folk, they, they'll sit there and say, Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus. Until something happened, man. Until something changed. Until something turned. They just holler, Jesus, 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 Jesus. See, they didn't, they, didn't know, they didn't know all them scriptures and things that we know today. They didn't know Greek. They didn't know Hebrew. But they knew Jesus. 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 See, there's power in that name. And if that name can't settle you and bring you peace, I mean right in the middle of Tarmar, right in the middle of something going on, and you just lean on that name, the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. Amen? And watch this now. Watch this. You have been given the right to use that name. Yeah. Amen. It's good, it's good. Now, it's good. why you won't use it? It's good. Yes, sir. See? Why you won't use it? Why you, re why you just uh, choose on staying frustrated rather than using that name? Yeah. That's good, Pastor. That's good, Pastor. Yes, sir. Why you settle on letting the devil tear up your house yeah. rather than putting him out of the house? Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. That's good, Pastor. Now, see, in the natural, men, in the natural, if, if an intruder came in your house, man, you'd be on it. Yeah, you would, and you should be. You'd be on your A game. You'd make sure he didn't harm you. You'd make sure he didn't harm your family. Right? Come on, man. Can I get a better amen? Okay, now watch this. Why are you letting the devil come in there and you ain't doing nothing but watching the game? See, if an intruder came in your house and he was in the next room and they're doing some harm to your wife or to your children, you wouldn't be sitting there watching the game. That's good. That's good, Pastor. Amen. Well, 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 why are you so unconcerned and the devil sitting there reaping havoc in your house? Yeah. You're just letting him do that. Yes, sir. You know why? Because we're more physically in tune than we are spiritually. That's correct. That's correct. That's good, Pastor. Amen. Yes, sir. You got to realize when the enemy is trying to get in and trying to influence your children and trying to influence your spouse. Amen. Trying to influence your coworkers, those on the job. Ain't no need to get mad at them. You mad at them. You mad at this race. You mad at that race and all of that. And that's not even where the fight is. The battle is spiritual. And you have a right to use the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Now watch this. Let's go to James 4, verse 7. James 4 and verse number 7. Say, when I use the name of Jesus, I am demonstrating authority and invoking power. Say it again. Whenever I use that name, I am demonstrating authority and invoking power. Now, that's the truth. And so how many know, now, now look, how many know that changed your attitude. You know your walk is different when you know you got authority. When you know you got power or juice, whatever you want to call it, you know you got juice. Is that what they call it? What they call it, young folk? Huh? Juice? You ain't young. You what are young folk. <laughs> Had me in the 70s talking about juice. I'm a young folk. What they call what they call a young folk? Swag. 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 Yeah, you got swag. You walk different when you got swag. <laughs> Amen. All right, now watch this. Look at verse number seven. And I want to look at verse seven, but I want to I want to start reading at the last sentence. Because there's a principle in here we need to get a hold of. Now watch what he says, this last sentence. Let's read that together. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Do what? Resist the devil and what? If I, if I resist the devil, so I don't have to just sit there and let the devil do what he want to do, right? I can what? Resist the devil and what's going to happen? He's going to flee from me. That word flee means to run in terror. So he's frightened now. But now watch this. Now, this word resist... It means to stand against. It means to oppose. It means to confront. 
It means to challenge, but now watch this. I like this word. It means handle. Amen. Handle. You ever been told, look, you, you need to handle that. Yeah. You ever been told that? Yeah. Okay, you, you need to handle him. You need to handle them. Handle. Handle the devil. Handle him. You need to handle him. Got you, got you in sorrow, got you in grief, got you constantly mourning, got you frustrated. You need to handle him. Handle the devil. Challenge the devil. Confront the devil. And, and he'll flee from him. Now watch this, people of God. Here's what the devil is banking on. He's banking on you and I not challenging him. Because watch this now. Watch this now. now, now say second part. Second part. Now I'm going to tell you the first part later. Let's just talk second part right now. Second part is this. That he doesn't have to flee if you don't challenge him. If, if you never confront him. See, watch this. You know what you've been doing? Confronting this one, that one, and the other. Confronting her. Confronting him. Confronting them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Rather than challenging him. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yes, sir. Amen. And he does, not, he does not have to flee. Second part, he does not have to flee if he's not challenged. Right. The Bible said when, when Jesus, when, after he ended all of his temptations with the devil, uh, with, with Jesus, the Bible said he departed for a season. You know why he in, eventually departed? Because Jesus was challenging him. Right. 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 Jesus, didn't, Jesus wasn't sit there, sitting there in the wilderness crying. Yeah, the devil been messing me. I got all these thoughts going through my head and the devil trying to get me to turn, you know, stones into bread and they want me to go way up there on the top and jump down. I'm just so tired of that dog on devil. The devil's just busy. Yeah. That's, not, that's, not what, that's not what Jesus was doing. <laughs> no, Jesus said, no, I'm going to challenge you. That's right. You told me to turn these stones into bread? Mm -hmm. Okay, man don't live by bread alone. Yeah, that's good. Amen. In other words, once I turn these stones into bread and eat it, I'm still going to be empty. Amen. Then he told, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Amen. But, but notice what he's doing. He's challenging the devil. He is confronting the devil. And until you challenge him, and when they say he left him for a season, that word season means opportune time. You know what? You won this time, but I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. But see, you'll never hear him say, I'll be back if you don't give him reason to leave. Confront him. You just can't sit there and let the devil just, just plant. Look, you belong to God. Amen. Your mind belong to God. And you don't just sit there and let the devil put all kind of negative thoughts and bad thoughts, suicidal thoughts in your mind. You are God's property. Don't let him put his stuff there. Confront him. Tell him that don't go there. That don't belong there. No, I'm the righteousness of God. I'm a child of God. No, I'm blessed when I come out and blessed when I come in. No, I'm the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. You got to confront him. You see somebody putting, you know, if somebody puts something where it don't belong and you just sit there and that's yours, you just sit there. I wonder why they put that there. No, you, you, hey, hey, no, that, that don't go right there. That don't go right Now, why? Watch this, folks. I've just changed the game. Yeah. Because I was willing to confront. Now, watch this. You can't change what you won't confront. And, and don't complain about what you won't challenge. Don't complain. Amen. 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 You got to confront him. Confront him. You know he's influencing your child. Confront him. You can whoop, you can whoop the child all day until you confront him. Nothing's going to happen. Yes, sir. Nothing's going to happen. Now he says, resist the devil, and what's going to happen? He's going to flee from you. Now watch this. Let's look at the first part of that. Now let's go back and read the first part of that verse. And it says what? Submit yourself therefore to God. Uh-oh. 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 
Watch this, because there's a principle now. There's a principle now. Here's the principle. Your authority doesn't work for you if you're not under authority. That's right. That's right. Your, your authority doesn't work if you're not under authority. He says, submit, therefore, yourself to God. So, so how many know resisting the devil and him fleeing don't work if I'm not first part submitted to God? Because you only have authority when you are under authority. Once you get out from under authority, you don't have any more authority. Right. Because see, when you get outside of authority, now there are going to be negative consequences for you because you got from under authority. Now, now, when the police pulls you over, that policeman has what? Authority. authority. Now, if he tries to get you to do something that violates the law, okay, he's just stepped from under authority. Right. And there are going to be some negative consequences for that officer. Right. Many, watch this, watch this, and, and, and not, not to make light of anybody's situation, many officers have lost their position, have lost their authority, have lost their job and our career because although they had authority, they got from under authority. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they end up having to experience now negative consequences because they got from under authority. Yeah. See, when you're talking to the devil, you got to make sure you stand under. Yeah. You got to be under God. You got to be under Jesus Christ. You got to be under the word of God. See, you know, as, as men, you know, we try, we're trying to push our weight in the house and trying to get everybody to line up. And, and we're, not, we, 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 we're the ones who from under authority. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so now we have, to add va we have to add volume to get what we want. Talk, Pastor. Because, see, whenever you got to holler to get what you want, something wrong. And so you're trying to get the wife, trying to get the wife to do everything you say, but, but you don't obey nobody. Yeah. Come on, man. Don't get mad at me, brother. Come on now. Don't. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. I'm your boy. I'm, 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 I'm your boy, man. I'm, I'm still your boy. Yes, sir. We're just trying to get this thing straight. Yes. You know, you want her to do everything you say, but you don't do nothing pastor say. You know, a pastor don't run my house, pastor run his own house. I run my house where I run my house. No, I'm giving you the word of God. See, see, you, you from under authority, but then you want to make her do everything you say. Yeah. Authority works for you when they see you submitted to authority. Yeah. You don't want to do what God say. You don't want to do what Jesus say. You don't want to do what the word say, but then you want everybody to jump at your command. Where my 400 at, man? Come on now. Where, where, where my 400? You know, they, boy, that 400 and went down to about 40, man. They didn't, they didn't left me, boy. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying, I'm trying to get you in a position where she gladly do everything you say. And it starts with you being under authority. Let's read this scripture, then I got, I got, I got a quick, come on, Let, let's read this, let's read. Go, go to Luke 7 and, and verse 6, I'll show you this and then I'm done. I'll show you this, then I got to stop. <laughs> I'm trying to hope somebody, man, I'm, try, I'm trying to help somebody. If, if you just, see, all you got to, you just make sure you stay under authority. You just stay under authority, make sure you do, the Bible said that the head of, the head of Christ is God, the, 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 head, the head of uh, uh, man is Jesus Christ, and, and the wife and the kids fall under that, but I got to make sure I'm doing what Jesus said, I'm honoring my past, I'm doing what the man of God tells me to do, and now I'm not responsible for what my wife does. I just make sure I stay under, because God is going to come and deal with whoever is not under. But see, I know, I know, I know, brothers, I know in your flesh, it just feel better when you choose not to wait on the Lord and you make her get under. See, it's just something about your flesh make you feel like a man. The Bible says that a wife should obey her husband, watch this, but not out of fear. You ain't no man because she obey you because she's scared of you. 
She should be able to honor you, obey you, and submit to you because she see it is a privilege to serve a man like you. Cop dog. My God. Hallelujah. That you are, you are so, you are so in order. You are so in line. She wanna serve you. She can't, she can't wait till you get home and ask your baby, "What can I do for you? What, what you want? How you want it?" I'm talking about your food. Whether then when you, you come home, she, hey, kids, y'all put, put the toys up. You can't play with, here come your daddy. <laughs> they already know the routine. Put everything up. Act like we ain't having fun when daddy come home. <laughs> Dog too, he out. <laughs> 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 You know some of y'all can't, here he come y'all. <laughs> they don't even say daddy, here he come y'all. <laughs> come on, Luke 6, Luke 6, Luke 7, Luke 7, Luke 7, Luke 7, Luke 7, Luke 7. I got to stay under authority. I got to stay under authority. I can't stand here as a pastor, as a man of God, in authority that God has given me as the shepherd. Of, of this house. This, this work, watch this now, this work is not mine by possession, it is mine by protection. That I'm the one responsible. I'm the one that God's gonna come to. And I can't stand here and give you the word and expect you to submit to authority and I don't do nothing God says. I don't do nothing the word say. See, you don't have authority when you get from under authority. Amen. Your authority doesn't work when you get from under authority. Amen. And see, you can't, and when you try to confront the devil, and he know you're not doing anything that's in the word, he's going to say, I know you ain't talking to me. <laughs> Remember the sons of Sceva? That's right. They tried to deal with some devils, and the devil said, look, we don't, we don't know you. Paul, we know Jesus, we know, but who are you? We don't, we don't know you. You got to make sure that you stay under authority. Watch this now. Uh, Luke, Luke, Luke 7, verse 6. Watch this. Then, then, then Jesus went with them, and, and when he was not far from, from the house, the centurion sent his friends to him, sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Amen. Watch this now. What's the next three words? For I also. For I also. For I also. What did he say? For, For I, also. I also. Now, now what? Translation. He, he said to Jesus, me too. Me too. Yeah. Now, whatever he's getting ready to say to Jesus, he starts off by saying, me too. And, and uh, uh, he's saying, just like you. For I also, come on, am a man, come on, set under. He says, I, I am a, I'm a man set under, just like you are a man set under. Mm. See, a man, he's able to set under. And he said, just like you, I am also a man set under. Now, come on, read the rest of it. What did he say? Authority. Come on, read on. Okay, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Now he says, look, I have under me. But I'm still under. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. He, he said, he said, he said, he said, I, 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 I'm a man who have soldiers under me. But, but I also am a man like you. I'm under. So he's saying, I'm not, I'm not just because, just because I got folk under me, that doesn't give me the right to be a Lone Ranger. Yeah. 
He said, me too. I'm under. And, and because Jesus, because you are under, I know you can say stuff and stuff get done. You don't have to come to my house. You can speak a word and my servant will be here. In other words, I know your words work because you still under. And he said, I'm a man just like that. Yeah. I'm just like you, Jesus. I know you under. Yeah. You ain't just running around here with these 12 disciples and, and then all these, like they your little flunkers, and you run around here, you know, just pushing your weight around. No, you only do what the Father say. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. You only say what the Father tells you to say. I know you have disciples under, but I know you under. Yeah. And I, Jesus, I have soldiers under me. I can say to one, go, he go. I can say to another, come, he come. I say to one, do this, he does it. But, but, but forget all that. I ain't trying to be no big shot. I'm under. Yeah. yeah. So here's the picture I'm trying to paint me in. That, yeah, you got your wife under you. You got your kids under you. But who you? Under. Because your authority only works when you under. Yes. Are you listening to me? And see, brothers and sisters, as long as we are not under, our authority doesn't work. You can be rebuking, binding, and, and, and doing all kinds of stuff, cussing the devil out. And the devil's sitting there looking. <laughs> they ain't under nobody. I don't have to listen to them because they don't listen to nobody. Now, what about your single people, single ladies? Who you under? Amen. Who's speaking into your life? Yeah. And see, that's why you can't take authority over the devil. You can't take control over the devil because you don't let nobody speak into your life. Because, see, you your own woman. See, you, you, you have more confidence in, in women's live than you do the word of God. You ain't under nobody. This is 2012. Ain't nobody no caveman stuff, all that. You know, I ain't gonna be under no man. I'm, I'm, I'm I ain't for that. I'm, I'm under myself. I makes my own money. Got me my own job. Don't need nobody. Sure, you better listen to Beyonce. I'm an independent woman. Mm -hmm. You're an independent woman who have no authority over the devil. And when the devil attack you, call on the name of Beyonce and see what happens. Now, and that ain't, that ain't anything, I'm not, I'm not knocking her. That ain't nothing against her. Just gotta keep her in her perspective, in her place. The name of, that name is not higher than the name of Jesus. Amen? Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for the word today. And let me say this before I close. I just, I just heard, I need to say this. And you know, you, you, you women, you need to stay under the authority of your husband. Stop listening to, to the beauty shop ministry. Don't, listen, don't let no silly woman speak into your life. God has set an order. And, and you have to stay under because whoever stays under is who opens the door for God to come in and fix the whole thing. Yes. Yes. Ain't no need of both of us being from under. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. That, come here, Charles. Stand right there. Right here. Turn around. Pastor Nakia. Stand on right there. Turn around. Cassandra, on the floor there in front of Pastor Nakia. Okay. Now, the anointing, the blessings, the favor, it starts at the head. 
and it flows down. All right? So now, now here's what's going to happen. Because this is what happens in a lot of homes too. That the flow is coming. But because he's out of place, he, the anointing don't do this. The anointing flows down. And see, a lot of times, brothers get mad because it looks like everything happening for her. She come home testifying about the stuff, and he frustrated. He mad. And he don't realize what it is. He thinks she's trying to compete with him. And it ain't that she's trying to compete with him. She just chose to stay under. He trying to find a job and can't. Frustrated with the one he had, trying to find another and can't. She comes home testifying about the promotion she got. And he really can't rejoice with her. Because he, it, it ain't just about you. About your, about your promotion. I'm out here struggling trying to get a job. You, all you can talk about. And what, what he don't realize, what needs to happen is, he just needs to get under. And now that flow starts getting on him now. And now things start popping and jumping for him too. Why? Because he has gotten under where the flow is. Here's the word to all of us. You just make sure you stay under. Because God is not obligated to come way out here and try to do anything for you. God is consistent. He's the same. God's going to stay with this flow right here. And the best thing for you to do, submit yourself and go on line up. Go, go on be a man and line up. Because out here ain't being a man. See, that's the flesh. That's how the devil influences her. Devil influences her. Try to make us think we're getting soft, we, we weak, and, and, you know, and we really ain't being a man. But no, brothers, it, it take a man to yield himself to what God is doing so his family can be blessed. Amen. Now, now, see, I, you know, brothers, you know, I, I stay under. See, I'm just trying to, I'm sharing this with you so you can, so your, your 2013 will be different. Now I'm an old man. I'm wall-to-wall -wall man. I'm, I'm an old man. And I run my house. We, in my house, we do what I say. And I say what my wife say. <laughs> But, now, but, now, but, see, but see, I'm blessed. I'm not jocking. I know who I am. I know who I am. I lead my family. And I know God's given me a wife to help me and not to hurt me. And if anybody wants you to succeed, it's that woman. I'm out of time. I got to stop. I'm, uh, thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.